Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on rocks. I like rocks. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episodes 3 and 4, A Flurry of Emotions, and Rock Solid Friendship. Uh, yes, we're actually doing two pony episodes at once. Lux was kind of thinking about varying things up and... I came along for the ride. Let's see. Twilight Sparkle, learning responsibility, more responsibility, and Pinkie Pie learning to butt out. Uh, so let's start with the first episode. Twilight Sparkle learns how to be responsible. My major thought apparently didn't cross any pony's mind. You are going to take an infant to a hospital where all of the kids have horsey hives? Which apparently either isn't contagious in the way we think disease is normally contagious or they're out of the contagious stage or something because no one thought about it, like you said. Yes, but still, hospitals are a great place to pick up infectious diseases. Do you really want to take the sky on of the royal family to one? Ah. <laughs> uh. Nice show of emotions there, Ember. <laughs> but yeah, I like how you came up with that. It's like, wait a minute, that's a good point. They're, they're going to a hospital with sick people, specifically sick children with a disease that sounds a lot like chicken pox. That took out the entire class on picture day. Mm hmm That sounds highly contagious. I'm surprised they didn't come up at any point. Thank you, cartoon logic, I guess. I guess. Because... That was like one of my first thoughts was, you want to take Flurry Heart to, to the hospital. I was like, who are you going to find to babysit Flurry Heart while you're at the hospital? But no, we're going to drag Flurry Heart on all the errands and pay no attention to her. Yeah, and why didn't she get any of her friends to help? Seriously? I mean, you've got six other friends, uh, seven if you count Trixie. And... Even more if you count anybody in Ponyville, because you're on pretty good terms with most of the town. Mm-hmm. Also, Spike took way too long to find that toy. Oh, yeah. Also, I know they're young and everything, but couldn't you have attempted to teach them the concept of sharing? And not sharing in the way Flurry Heart attempted to do. Yes. Flurry Heart, Solomon's judgment doesn't work if you actually tear the item in half first. Yeah. Though, since we're on that moment, shouldn't Pound and Pumpkin look older than Flurry Heart? A little, yeah. They it were born much sooner than the young Alicorn. And if you, I don't believe there's been any canon yet in the show to refute this, but Tale of Two Sisters, Alicorns age extremely slowly, which means Flurry Heart should look younger for longer. Especially since she was born an alicorn from a non-alicorn parents. Alicorn and non-alicorn. Mm, good point. Yeah, mixed family. Kind of like how Pound and Pumpkin, mm -hmm. a pegasus and a unicorn from a pair of earth pony parents. Yep. There was this, this on this side of my family. This makes sense, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it totally doesn't sound like you guys cheated on each other. <laughs> also, watching Flurry Heart and all the mischief she got into at the different locations. Very reminiscent of seeing almost any parent with any child in public. Hmm. That's probably the point. Probably. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I only looked away for a second. I can't believe... Yes, children do move that quickly. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I used to hide in the circular, um, not wardrobes, but... Clothing racks? Clothing racks, yes. Apparently, I used to hide in those from my parents, and they'd find me because I would giggle when they got nearby. At least this is what they tell me. <laughs> I have no memory of this. So, yeah, Twilight overbooked and overcommitted her day because she didn't know how to say no. Especially to her visiting niece and brother and sister-in-law. How bedraggled, I think the term is. How rough they both looked. Yes, uh, Shining especially. Cadence was slightly more put together. 
Mm. Though that also makes me wonder, does he like only do teaching duties? Um, can't remember his name right now. I drew him though. Oh, Sunburst? Yeah, Sunburst. Is he like only teaching duties? Or isn't he supposed to like help take care of the kid? Is he like in work? Is he even worse for wear back at the kingdom going, yeah, they're gone, thank God. <laughs> Yes, because what I remember about the Chrysler is it was very parallel to human world's uh, godparent. <laughs> Kitty says hello. Uh, hi, kitten. Yes, that's my arm. Please don't chew it off. <laughs> uh, kitten likes to join us. But back to the story. And back to the classic trope of the parent's finally getting a chance to get away from the child and then instantly missing the child and everything reminds them of the child yes it was wonderful that the artist was so touched by this he's like oh this is wonderful i mean this is what i was thinking about with my art but it's reaching you in a whole different way i'm so touched by this now go to her <laughs> like yes totally ditch the art show that you came all the way from the crystal empire to go see to go pick up your daughter from her aunts. And apparently alicorns play hide and seek in a very fun way. It's also, um, what was it, bear or something something? Oh, which part? Where they were making the teddy bears dance around or when they were pretending to be bears and chasing each other around and growling? That part. The chasing each other around growling. Yes, which in the beginning got a little too scary for mm. Flurry Heart. And then... Flurry Heart being scared of Twilight at the end when she finally put her hoof down. Mm hmm That's part of being an adult, though. Yeah. I'm like, eh, no, no, no. Okay, yes, Twilight, you were in the wrong for having accepted to watch Flurry Heart when you had other obligations and not paying her appropriate attention during those obligations. But Flurry Heart was doing something that was endangering other people. Yes, you raise your voice. Yes, you put your hoof down. And yes, she should feel bad about that. She should be a little scared. Apparently, no one has ever yelled at this child. Apparently. It's not really how things work. Yeah, you have to raise your voice a little. You shouldn't really be screaming at your kid, but you should definitely raise your voice to an authoritative level. Which is what I felt Twilight did. And it worked. Flurry listened. Twilight's apology was appropriate because of the way she took on the level of responsibility. At the same time, Flurry seems to have quite a lot of understanding of the world around her. So it would almost make sense that she understands that her action was putting others in harm's way. I mean, she was freaked out because she couldn't find her whammy. I get that. I mean, they made it extremely important in the beginning of the episode. Like, oh, that's getting lost. You knew it was going to either get lost or something will happen to it, like it would get damaged. It get lost because damage, Twilight could just magic it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like, look at this tower. It stood here for hundreds of years. Next scene, oh my god, they destroyed the tower. Well, dude, you couldn't tell. You, you pointed it out. You knew something was going to happen to it. That's how stories work. Foreshadowing. Something's going to happen to this tower. Probably bad. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when I was playing this one video game. Look at our town. Isn't it peaceful? This town's getting destroyed, isn't it? Next scene later. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, also, nice callback to Pinkie Pie's files on every pony. That's not any less creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, can I... What's the favorite of this person? One second. <laughs> and this person. And this person. And can you write sorry on them? I have a stamp for that. Why are almost all the representations of writing in MLP actually pictures? If they're not scribbles, they're pictures. You know, like all of Charlie's roll call lists and whose turn it is for their parents to come in. And speaking of Charlie, <laughs> yes, I have to write all of this back up there with my mouth. <laughs> Twilight, you couldn't have, like, written it for her? Because you could have probably, like, grabbed four pieces of chalk and had it back up there in no time. Well, she probably didn't even notice that there was something written up there originally. She just thought that Flurry made a mess, not erased hours worth of work of a lesson plan. It was nice that Charlie pointed out, 
Don't you have like a million books? Thank you. Yeah, but they're not kids' books. Good point. Should have just borrowed one of Spikes. <laughs> yeah, one of Spikes or or had one of your friends go and get some. Yeah, because that would have been another thing. Instead of running all the errands herself, ask her friends to run the errands. And then only take on the responsibility of coming to the hospital. Because that's your princess role. Mm -hmm. That it was going to be Princess Twilight coming to the hospital. Though funny enough, that reminded me of the next episode. And how you find out that Twilight's castle is made completely out of very common rocks. Just because it was created by magic doesn't mean it's rare. Mm -hmm. And it would make sense that something that grew out of the ground in that area, since apparently that cave is pretty standard, and those rocks are the same rocks that the magical device would use the available resources. Because why would it matter the rarity of the material when all it's doing is making a solid structure? As Maud said, rock is a very stable building source. So yes, Maud, the only graduate from a rock college. I understand that they're showing it's an uncommon field, but with a class size that small, how is the university staying in business? Yeah, because you make money off the number of students that go through your institute. Yes, through tuition fees and federal funding. Mm hmm And other sources of funding nowadays, like vending machines and other things. Quite so. Also, rock graduation gaps? Yeah, I'm thinking only Earth ponies of the rock variety would want to be around during the whole classic toss the hat into the air thing. How far could you actually toss it anyways? Uh, considering how strong Mod is, probably pretty high. Mm-hmm. Then everyone dodges out of the way. Yes. Uh, nice touch, Boulder being in his own little chair in the chair. Mm-hmm. And the high hoof Pinkie Pie gave him. Yes. That was like Pinkie Pie's one good part during the graduation portion. The rest of the time, she was way overboard. I'm like, Pink Amina Diane Pie, will you calm down for two seconds? And that reminds me, we found out Maud's full name, which I can't remember because it went by so quickly. I can tell you the middle name was Daisy. I believe it was Madalina Daisy Pie. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. Or I'll just put it in the description field below. Or anywhere else, if sometime in the future, YouTube decides to move the comment field and description field above the video. <laughs> so yeah, was there any more about the princess episode before we go any further into this episode? It was interesting how much fun Twilight and Flurry Heart were having and Twilight's realization that, oh, you just wanted to play. Yes, yeah, she's a small child. That doesn't mean you give in to everything she wants. Mm-hmm. Looks over at the cat. <laughs> There is a balance, but it's hard to have that, especially when you're one of the periphery relatives, the ones that are tend to be more spoilish, mm -hmm. like grandparents and aunts and uncles and older cousins, because they don't want to be the, you know, parenting role. They want to be the fun one. That was Twilight for most of the episode. It was really cute when she did the whole dancing bear thing and very impressive how well Flurry could actually follow along. I mean, even though her bear wasn't making as graceful of movements, she is a tiny, tiny little baby pony. I'm guessing Sunburst is a pretty good teacher so far, because he's also supposed to help teach her magic as well. Yes, but still, like that shield spell, Twilight said that was a very advanced spell. Mm -hmm. Though considering the changeling threat in the Crystal Empire earlier, it was probably a really good spell to teach the youngling. Yeah, and the heritage too. I should say, and a lineage too, because dad's named Shining Armor. Obviously, his specialty is probably some type of shield magic. Mm hmm. Considering he shielded all of Canterlot with that spell. Yeah, I was going to point that out next. She gave me a funny look, people. <laughs> so, yeah. It was a very nice episode. I definitely enjoyed it. Let's see. I'm trying to remember what the moral was. It was another one of those mixed morals or was it just a plain moral? I know it was another one that we didn't really have before. We have had similar ones, but... Yes, uh, taking on too much responsibility, learning to say no, and on Cadence and Shining Armor side, courtesy to others, because that was all extremely last minute. 
you traveled all the way from the Crystal Empire, but you couldn't let your potential babysitter know until you were at her front door? I think now would be a good time to move on to the next episode. Well, we were there, and we just kind of slid backwards, so... I should say move back to the next episode, then. Yeah, Pinkie Pie was way overboard in that episode. Yeah, so it was a lot like watching her with uh, Cranky. Yeah, because I just kept saying, Leave them alone! I know. I'm like, Pinky, get the moose. <laughs> Three's a crowd. A to B conversation, see yourself out. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. Nice. You know that your sister doesn't operate on the same level that you do. And you already had a whole episode about trying to force your friends to be friends with Maude. So, okay, one, since all of them already had interaction with her, wouldn't you have picked one of the main six? And two, didn't you learn anything? Yeah... Also, if you were observing them, shouldn't you have, like, stayed out of the way and just observed what was going on and not go, Hi! Because that isn't observing. That's altering what you're observing by interacting with it. Well, technically. The act of observation is automatically interference. Mm -hmm. But not quite so freaking direct. Also, there was a lot of callbacks in this episode. We got Derpy, we've got the Canyon, we got Tank... We've got Lyra, full name, mm -hmm. and Bon Bon walking with each other. But yeah, this is one of those episodes where Pinkie Pie was written a little too annoying. Because <laughs> the entire time, especially after Maude and Starlight got together, I was like, ooh, this should be interesting. Especially since we found out Maude helped. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yes. But, you know, she also was like, well, it's not like she's done that lately. So, accepting. Strong and accepting. Mm -hmm. Though I, I do find it interesting that she automatically goes, Oh, with the right type of rock, you could rule all of Equestria. <laughs> are, are, you, are you joking with me? Maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, for someone like Maude, who doesn't necessarily have a lot of social skills, hmm, what do I know about this person? And how does it relate to my interest in rocks? Mm -hmm. Also, I like kites. <laughs> kites are cool. I really like kites. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, she went pretty techy there on the details of the type of the kite and the variations and flying it and everything. It just the subtle... Okay, I don't know how much you can say subtle in a children's show, but the non-verbal communication between the two of those? Mm-hmm. Just a subtle smile Maude had every now and then. And them both having the, yeah, your sister's a bit overboard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry about my sister. Yeah, she can get overexcited sometimes. She'll eventually calm down. Eventually. <laughs> also, I'm with Starlight. Those omelets sounded horrible. Yeah. I've heard some horrible things come out of Pinkie Pie's mouth when it comes to food. She's just one of those... She, she puts hot sauce on everything. So, yeah, remember the very first episode of MLP? Mm-hmm. But considering she knows everyone else's tastes and preferences, why would she suggest such a thing? Because this is your own sister, who apparently is your favorite sister out of all your sisters. Apparently. I guess because it's the only one that can withstand her for a good period of time. Especially after the whole transformation into Pinkie Pie from Pinkie Mina Dan Pie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was pretty, uh, until Rainbow. Ooh. Colors, excitement, there's more to the world than rocks. Mm-hmm. Makes you wonder what would happen to her sisters if they were still outside during that. Or would anything have happened? Since mm. Destiny seems to be set on tying the main six together. It was nice that we got to see more action from Boulder this time. And they're like, oh, yeah, we. C I'm sure there's a spell. I'm thinking, yeah, just wink the three of you out of there. Easy peasy. And she's like, Boulder, get us out of here, boy. What the frick? <laughs> okay, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Also, we found out Boulder's approximately 6,000, I believe it was, years old. Uh, he, looked a day he didn't look a day over 3,000 or 300. I can't remember which. Uh, 2,000 and 300, I believe. Mm. And... You know, just start like, you can tell all that from a line? 
Yes, there there is a lot that can be learned from observation. Mm hmm Yeah, apparently it's something I need to do more often. Because <laughs> I completely missed that rocks made up the fire. Yes, rocks made up the fire that the kettle was hanging over. Yeah. Well, realistically, if the rocks were hot, they could still work just like a fire. Mm hmm Or if they were a type of rock that gave off heat or some sort of magic rock, because this is the MLP universe. Mm hmm also, I thought she would have encountered the eels sooner, because it looked like she was surrounded by those caves. So, would have expected it sooner? Or with how calm she was in the beginning, that she kind of had reached an understanding with the eels, instead of the whole running and escaping that the two sisters did together? Mm hmm Also, some nice facial animations from Pinkie Pie. They looked different than what I've seen before out of the show. And I like that Maud's not actually staying in Ponyville. Because, yeah, that's a bit too social. And the cavern was something unusual and different, unlike the gym cave, which was very common stones, which poor Rarity thought were not so common. Yep. <laughs> I love how Rarity like, I slowly started crying, and was like, gotta get my out of here! <laughs> mm-hmm. Does it really matter if they're common or rare for what you're doing, Rarity? You just want your dresses to be beautiful. Also, apparently she's designing for another famous singer. I'm pretty sure it was one we've seen before. Yeah, but she wasn't doing Countess's wardrobe before. Hmm. She was only doing... Oh yeah, you're right. I was thinking of the lady that I can't remember the name of her right now, but she actually had the dolphin thing on her head. Yes, in her headdress. Sapphire Shores. Sapphire Shores. Yeah, I was thinking of Sapphire Shores. No, not Captain's it... call. Oh, you might. That was another nice. Yes, it was a callback. So she's now designing wardrobe not just for Sapphire Shores, but for Countess Coloratura. And I'm surprised she's still going underneath that name. Well, it's what she was known by. Easier to change the image and keep the name because then you still have the recognizability. Like some people probably wonder why this channel is still called Lux Analysis of MLP when we do so much more and it's not just Lux. Yeah, that's me because I've heard that people have issues if they change the channel's name. So I haven't bothered to change it because I don't want to have to go through all that. So, see? Yep. <laughs> ah. So, any more about this episode? Boulder in that hat? <laughs> yes. Boulder had his own little hat. And apparently she made another rock friend. I'm guessing the one that blew away. Yeah. Also, those are some staying strong winds. Mm-hmm. That can blow rocks away. Mm-hmm. Also, Maud really sneaking away in the middle of the night. Well, with a sister as overpowering as Pinkie Pie. Yeah, because she wasn't letting Maud get a word in edgewise. Because if they could have talked sooner, might not have had to go all the way out to Ghastly Gorge. Or at least could have gone together to check it out as more of a comparative thing. And I loved, you know, the points that Maud was making in Starlight's interpretation. It's like, oh, I get it. They're strong and they're beautiful and they don't judge. I'm like, wow, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it really does sound awesome. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, I'm like, oh yeah, this is why I like animals. They're strong, beautiful, and don't judge. Unless they're hungry, then, then they're judging you all the time, going, why haven't you fed me yet? Just because the kitten gives you death glares. <laughs> She's not a kitten. So I think we should wrap things up with our thoughts on both of these episodes? Probably. This was my one concern about us doing two at a time. For MLP, even though we've done it with other series, like and we're used to talking longer for single episodes of MLP. I'm like, how long is a combo episode going to be? Especially when they're not two parters; they're two very distinct stories that don't, at the moment, really connect with each other. Mm -hmm. They were two nice slice of life episodes. Yes, which so far seems to be more the focus of this season. Mm -hmm. So everyone who complained that the previous seasons went to Magical Girl are now getting the Slice of Life Everyday episodes, and everyone who, who was going, there was nothing wrong with the Magical Girl stuff, is going, why aren't we having any giant magic battles? 
Hmm, I'm perfectly fine either way myself. As long as it's a good episode, I'm good with it. And these were two pretty good episodes. The second one I think was a little weaker because Pinkie Pie was a little overboard, but overall, I really liked both of them. I did enjoy both. Pinkie definitely got on my nerves. If I could have done that thing that Trixie did when she had the dark amulet and take Pinkie Pie's mouth, I probably would have done it. So there's a, there's that whole thing of like, how is she breathing? Cartoon logic. Also, the previous episode showed she was fine, so... So, shall we do our outro? Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 7, Episodes 3 and 4, Flurry of Emotions, Rock Solid Friendship. If you've enjoyed this, please like, share, reblog, the standard YouTube things. I know the reblog thing is different, but hey, I am on other networks too. Tumblr and DeviantArt, per se, <laughs> where you can view more of my art. And if you want to give this channel a little bit of a kickback, I've got a Patreon, a coffee, and maybe you could click on the Amazon link. I don't know. Amazon's not affiliated with us, even though we're using their affiliate program. <laughs> it's called the affiliate program, but they are not really sponsors of us and probably not aware of anything that's actually on our channel. So thank you for watching and come again.